What if we see some rises for first grade students in one poem? Jupiter is the fifth from the sun. It's the biggest in the solar system. It is the brightest of them all. The Romans named it after the god Jupiter. Is it really doing this rhymes? <laughs> Hey, what is up everybody, Ivan from Weights and Biases here, and in this video I'll show you a really quick and a really simple way that you can start using OpenAI's really cool GPT-3 models in Python. And if you have fine-tuned the GPT-3 model and wondering how you can use your fine-tuned GPT-3 model, I'll also show you how you can do that in the video. Let's get started. So I would say the main reason as to why you would want to deploy GPT-3 in Python is if you wanted to build some sort of application uh, using the magic of this really, really cool large language model. So maybe you're coming into this video after you've played around with ChatGPT, which has very much taken the internet by storm in the last couple months. And ChatGPT is essentially an application, a, a nicer way to ask questions from GPT-3 and essentially like a GPT-3 with a nicer UI and, and couple tweaks that, that make it possible. But the actual thing that generates text is still a variation of the GPT-3 model that they're using for chat GPT. And so if you want to do cool stuff with GPT-3, that's what we're going to learn about using in this video and hopefully you'll build some cool applications for it. And this is going to be a series of videos where in this one we'll cover setting it up in Python, but in the next videos we'll actually cover what kind of applications you can build with it. So stay, stay tuned for that. And uh, now let's jump into setting up an OpenAI account and getting the API keys and all that good stuff that we need to actually start using it in Python. So I am on the OpenAI website right now and to use the API, we click on the API and that's the part where you need to either create a new account within OpenAI or log into an existing one. I already have an account, um, but, it, but it's, it's like fairly simple way to create it. So just like go ahead, click like sign up and put in your details and it'll get you an account. Um, I'm gonna log into mine right now. All right, so now I've logged into the OpenAI API part of the OpenAI's website. So here's a few things that we can do right off the bat. For example, you can go to the playground here and here you can actually try to use GPT-3, essentially like the same um, results that we'll get in this web client we'll be getting uh, in Python via the API. So for example, maybe we want to, here's a poem about OpenAI API. So maybe we'll ask it to write a poem about OpenAI API. It's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not the most um, humble <laughs> AI system that I've seen, but um, I, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's very wrong. Uh, what's it saying here? So um, as you can see, it works, and that's what we'll be getting to use in Python. And to use it in Python, we need to get an API key. Um, so API key is essentially what will allow um, OpenAI to know that a particular Python program that's calling the API is attached to our account. And this way they can, you know, charge you money if you're using it a lot uh, and things like that. And if you're curious about prices, I'm showing you some on screen right now. As you can see, like the prices vary by how powerful is the model. Uh, and also by how much text you're generating with it. So here they're saying that the prices are per 1000 tokens. You can think of tokens as pieces of words where 1000 tokens is about 750 words. And as you can see, you can start experimenting for free using $18 of um, free credits, uh, which you can use in your first three months of using it. And then you can pay as you go. And uh, you know, you can choose your model, but We've already talked about the fact that you can choose your model. So yeah, refer to openai.com slash API slash pricing for the most relevant pricing information. But this is just for me to give you like an overview of uh, what you can expect when you first start using the, the API. So now we got to go and get our API keys. To do that, we'll click on our account. We'll click on view API keys. So here we can see the existing API keys that have been tied to our account and when they've been last used. And I'm gonna create one right now to show in this video, but don't worry though, uh, obviously after I've um, finished editing and making this video, I'll click on delete this API key and you know, it's, it's, it's uh, 
I'm, I'm gonna show you an example, but don't think that you can go and use it then um, because I've, I've revoked it. So let's click on this button to create a new secret key, API key generated. So here it's saying that it's only showing us the API key once and once we've copied it and saved it somewhere safe, it's not gonna show it to us again. Uh, it's okay, I'll copy it to clipboard and press okay. Now we have a new um, API key that we'll use in the code. And to do that, let's obviously jump in the code. So the first thing that we'll do here is we'll paste our very secret API key um, here, which will essentially set up an environmental variable uh, with the OpenAI key. And th that'll, in the future, will let the OpenAI Python client know what our API key is. So let's do that. So we've pasted the API key here. Uh, we run the self code and the variable is defined. So we'll install OpenAI, which is OpenAI's Python library, and we'll install WineDB, which is the weights and biases uh, Python library. And weights and biases, if you're not familiar, is an MLOps platform, which helps you with a lot of the machine learning uh, pipeline things, like tracking your data, um, training your models, optimizing the hyperparameters, and all of that. And since we're looking at this video, as an example of a use case where you want to go and develop some sort of application using GPT-3, it becomes really important that you have a way to keep track of your prompts because a really important part of building on top of GPT-3 is prompt engineering, which is kind of like figuring out a nice way to almost like ask GPT-3 to give you a desired outcome. And, and for that, it's very vital that you have a way to keep track while you're experimenting of your prompts and the completions that you're getting so that you would not lose the best performing prompts, for example. And that is what we're gonna use weights and biases for in this video. So let's click on the cell and install the libraries. And kind of like an additional fun fact about the two companies is that OpenAI is the first customer of weights and biases, and they actually use WNB to train all of these amazing GPT models. And when it comes to fine tuning, WNB is also integrated into OpenAI so that you can get like with one line of code, all of the training metrics from your fine tunes into weights and biases uh, and all that good stuff. And all that is to kind of say that there's a lot of merit in using the two products together. So next up, we'll import some libraries and pass the API key to OpenAI. And so next up, we're going to go and define a new weights and biases run inside a project that we'll name GPT-3 app in Python. And we'll also define a new weights and biases table with uh, two columns for prompt and completion, as we want to keep track of that. And WNB tables is a product inside WNB that lets you interactively query and explore tabular data, which is what we're going to do in this video with all the cool uh, predictions. And so now in the next cell, we'll actually perform inference on our prompt using GPT-3 uh, using the API. So here, let me make it larger. So here's the command in Python that we're using to access um, GPT-3. It's openai.completion.create. And here we pass the name of the engine, which is, as you remember, there's a couple variations of GPT-3s. There's different like Ara, Baba, Shkiri, Da Vinci models, and different versions of these models. For this one, we're gonna use the most powerful, as of right now, um, text Da Vinci uh, version three model. Uh, then we pass our prompt. As you can see, our prompt is, we define it here. And our prompt is to correct this to standard English. She no went to the market. So it's gonna do like some grammar correction stuff. Um, so we pass in our prompt, then we define temperature and temperature is a hyperparameter uh, that is responsible for how random the predictions that GPT-3 gives us are. If it's like zero, it's always gonna be the same thing. If it's, if it's uh, closer to one, it's actually gonna throw in some different stuff occasionally there. And then max tokens is for how many tokens do we wanna run our predictions. So the more tokens we have, the more text GPT-3 can generate. But the key word here is may, because, so for example, when it finishes correcting this sentence to proper grammar, it'll output like a stop sequence, which means that GPT-3 is done with, uh, with, the, with the predictions. Because if you think about it, it's just important for the model to know when to stop its uh, generations as to be able to generate in general. And that is me essentially trying to say that this hyperparameter controls how many tokens the model can predict in our case, 
uh, but it does not mean that it'll always be 256 tokens, if that makes sense, because sometimes it'll run into that like stop sequence. And then there's stop, and then there's stop B, um, frequency penalty and presence penalty, which also we kind of used to guide the predictions a little bit. And then it prints out the response and we add to the WMB table our um, prompt in the first column and in the second column, the response that GPT-3 gave us. So let's, let's finally run the cell and see what it gives us. Um, so as you can see, we had she no went to the market. It transformed it into she did not go to the market, which is correct if you ask me. And the logic of using WMB tables in this case is that we can go and we can run this cell with like different prompts for a little bit. So for example, we'll ask it to correct he no went to like say the store instead of the market, right? It'll give us the prediction. Um, he did not go to the store. Um, all of that stuff gets added to the WMB tables in this case. And then once we're done with the predictions, we can call WMB.log to log this um, predictions table and call WMB.finish to kind of finish uh, our particular run. And I'll kind of show you what that gives us right now. And so it gives us a link now to our project page and to this run to which we have logged this table so we can go and we can see here in the table um, our predictions. She now went to the market, she now went to the market. One time I did this like off camera to test it. Uh, and he now went to the store, he did not go to the store. So um, there we have it. And so the usage here is that um, you go, you try different prompts, you log them to the table. Once you're done, you log the table and then you can explore your prompts. And by the way, you can find more information about these hyperparameters in the OpenAI docs. I'll leave a link to them in the video description. And if you want some inspiration for all the cool tasks that you can do with GPT-3, you can go to um, Overview, then you can go to, like it's on the OpenAI API website, right? So you go to Overview, and then here you can click on Examples. And then Examples here, we have all sorts of different tasks. And by the way, I've taken the Grammar one uh, right here. It's an example, um, like, it's an example right here in their in their docs in this way. And as you can see, it has all sorts of tasks. It has SQL translate, classification. So here, for example, we have this like task example summarize for a second grader. So we go here, um, the prompt is summarize this for a second grade student. Um, and here's some information about Jupiter. And we can go here, look at the code, look at the prompt. Okay, so let's say, for example, we wanna work closely with this task. So what I'll do is I'll go and I'll start a new run and weights and biases in the new table because uh, our previous run, run was around this task of uh, correcting grammar. So I'll start a new one and then I'll go and I'll update our prompt. So I'll copy this and paste it here as our prompt. And then there's also some hyperparameter difference here that OpenAI people have put uh, for this task. So I'll also copy and paste the hyperparameters for this task right here. And let's try running it. So Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and the biggest in our solar system. It is so bright that it can cast shadows on Earth. It is named after the Roman god Jupiter also, and has been known to people since before recorded history. And we've started with um, some rise for second graders. It has a lot of math stuff. Yeah, so it's noticeably less complex than what we've started with, I would say. And let's say maybe we want to vary this a little bit. So let's try... Um, summarize this for, let's say, first grade student in uh, one sentence. So let's say we'll make it like even simpler. We'll try this prompt. So it just gives us uh, Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and it's very bright and big, named after the Roman god Jupiter. Okay, so maybe we want to vary this prompt even more. What if we see summarize this for a first grade student in one poem because gpt3 in recent update it's gotten really good with rhyming so um <laughs> okay jupiter is the fifth jupiter is the fifth from the sun it's the biggest in the solar system uh, it is the brightest of them all the romans named it after they got jupiter is it really doing this rhymes <laughs> so we know it by that name it's so bright that you can it's so bright that you can cast shadows with its light is the third brightest in the night. Wow, like this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's quite fun and you can do a lot of variability with these prompts. And also like this rhymes, like if it's really pulling up these rhymes, sun, system, like it, there, there's some cool rhymes. 
And uh, keep in mind, we've been uh, lagging all of this like prompt and completion pairs WNB table so that we, if we stumble on some of this like cool prompt ideas, we're not losing them and we can go and lag them to weights and biases now. And then click the link to navigate to our run page to which we've logged the table and then see our uh, prompts and completions. So here's the, yeah, so here's the latest one summarizes for a first grade student in the poem uh, and here are our previous ones. This way you can keep track of uh, all that good stuff. And the last thing I wanted to show you is how you can use a fine-tuned GPT-3 model uh, in Python using the API as well. In the video, which will pop up somewhere in one of the corners, uh, I fine-tuned GPT-3 to generate new um, Doctor Who episodes, synopsis, so to like come up with new sci-fi TV show ideas. And I'm gonna show you how you can use those types of fine-tuned models in the API as well. So couple things you need to change. So in that video, like I've, I've done a detailed explanation of all the steps there. So go and watch that video to learn how I, how I fine tuned it and all that good stuff. And so to use a fine tuned model, you need to know the name of that fine tune. And in that video, we use the OpenAI and WNB integration. So I've been logging all that stuff to weights and biases. And here, for example, let's say I want to use this model uh, with its name, uh, Curie, uh, FT, 1DB, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I go and, you know, I copy the name of the fine tune and then I paste the name of the fine tune in the name of the engine. Uh, like, let's see, let's see, let's see. I do it like this because that's like our engine and it's the you know name of the model and name of our fine tune on that model. And uh, if that fine tune is in your OpenAI account, it'll be able to access it via the API in this way. And then we also need to, we can play with hyperparameters, but I don't think that's necessary. I mean, maybe we'll give it more tokens to generate with. Maybe, yeah, temperature seems good. And we also need to change our prompt to the type of prompt completion structure that we've used for fine tuning. So for example, in the Doctor Who fine tunes, I've used imaginary name of an episode. So let's, for example, try invasion of alien fish. And then this like arrow symbol to know the transition from where the prompt ends to where the completion should begin. That's that's like the fine tuning stuff. Like, uh, why is that video? I, I go into way more depth on, on this particular topic. So now that we've done that, I'll go and I'll start, start a new weights and biases run, and we'll run this cell to perform inference on our prompt using the fine tuned model. So here we can see the results, the completion for the prompt invasion of alien fish. An ancient race of amphibious creatures known only as the Invasions have taken over the British coastline and are now in a bid to take over the world. Their leader, Ingrid, has kidnapped the doctor's companion, Joe Grant, and forced the doctor to come to their aid. Doctor must then go on a dangerous mission to defeat the invaders, but will he return with news of Ingrid's weakness? Ending credits, followed by the epilogue. Uh, yeah, it goes a bit off the rail here with the ending steps. So, so I think it may benefit here if we also add um, stop sequence. So as you can see in the last example, it kind of went off the rails at the end because I forgot to include a stop sequence. So here in the docs, I found that we can pass the agreement stop. And so here I'll put the stop sequence. I think it was just end for that particular fine tune. And let's try to generate some more. And a solar tsunami, and started is hurling towards a futuristic factory on earth, yada, yada. And yeah, as you can see now it ends normally <laughs> when the factory explodes and destroys our life on Earth. Well, not normally in the synopsis sense, but normally in the sense that it's not spamming all of the, like, and, and then, 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 stop sequences. And it actually stops generation when it stumbles into an end. So that's like a useful one to know uh, when using this, uh, when, when using your fine-tuned models with the OpenAI API in Python. And in the end, we'll uh, log the table and uh, call 1db.finish. And here we can see all the prompt and their completions that we've tried this time. So thank you so much for watching this video. We've covered all the stuff that I could think of that can be useful when deploying GPT-3 in Python with the OpenAI API. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer you. And if you like this video, consider smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel to see more tutorials, interviews and talks. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and uh, found it useful.